everybody, it's Gordon here and we're going to be talking today in this video about the up and coming phenomena which is known as a solar eclipse. Now eclipses, they happen a lot and you know, you, you, if you're not in a particular point on the world where you may see it, then it goes unannounced. But for astrology, you often hear people talking and worrying about uh, eclipses. Now, there are two sorts of eclipses. There is the lunar eclipse, and that we will be seeing happening in April. But the first one is a solar eclipse that we're going to experience this year. We will have two solar eclipses this year. One is going to be in March and the other one will be in September. And we will also experience two lunar eclipses, but it is the solar eclipses that I wish to really talk about here because you know you do hear a lot about it and you guys if you're interested in astrology um, then you know it's something that you may be scratching your head about and wanting to know what happens. Right, okay, so when we look at solar eclipses, we're not really, as astrologers, we're not so much interested in what is actually happening. Because if you remember or, or, or understand that astrology is to do with the interpretation of what is happening with the planets. So what is actually physically happening has nothing to do with the interpretation and how that can relate to a chart, etc., etc. So let's just look at the solar eclipse. Solar eclipses, I say, are quite common. Now, when they occurred in times of old, of course, you can imagine 16th, 17th century, it's not fully understood what is happening. So the earth darkens and, you know, almost twilight comes. So astrologers, religious leaders, and that sort of, uh, uh, that, that, that's that kind of person is gonna be looking, thinking, oh goodness me, doom, gloom, it's all gonna happen. Now, the truth around it is that for some, yes, there is, there could well be doom and gloom, um, but for others, all it marks is a time, a transformation. Uh, a transformation depending on where, and this is always the case with astrology, where and how a chart that you are looking at or concerned with is affected. Not all charts will be affected by the eclipse. Now, what happens with the eclipse? Well, we have a situation where we have the sun and we've got the, the earth over here and you've got the moon and the moon effectively passes in front of the face across the face of the sun. So you get this lovely blacking out, for want of a better word, of the sun, and you can see the glow of the sun around the edge. Now, when we look at this symbolically, the sun is representing our energy, our physical energy. And of course, the moon, if you've looked at the other videos in this playlist, because we talk about moon astrology, the moon represents our emotions. So what actually happens on the eclipse, as far as astrology is concerned, is that the emotion eclipses the physical. So the emotional eclipses the physical. It takes away from the physical. So what we get is necessarily a sudden change. Something is eclipsed out of your life. Now, when something is eclipsed out of your life, something goes out, something new comes in. So then the eclipse will uh, necessarily show change in the area of the chart that is activated by the eclipse. Also, we need to look at where the eclipse is occurring to get an idea on the energy on this. Now, this occur, this particular eclipse occurs, uh, so we're getting the moon energy and the sun energy together, a bit like a new moon, because again, they are, you know, they are con they're conjuncting, for want of a better word, together, but we're getting a change, is in the 29th degree of Pisces. Now, Pisces is all to do with emotion, because it's a water sign, so we're expressing emotion, but we're also um, expressing a, because it's a very 29th degree, it's almost a psychic degree, there, there are certain degrees that are very, very sensitive, 
as you come towards the 29th stroke zero, you're going into a bit of an esoteric world. You're going into a bit of a dream world. So it's a very psychic event for those that are going to be affected by it. But essentially, Pisces likes to have a cause. So you can expect uh, 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 you can expect a change around the emotions or the drive in a particular chart. Maybe you're going off in a different direction, perhaps as far as work is concerned. You're becoming more creative. Um, relationships can under, undergo a transformation uh, under the eclipse because it will affect the emotion and it marks an ending and it marks a new beginning. So something being eclipsed in your life, but to have the full interpretation as it is on there, it's quite a sensitive degree. It will affect quite a few people, I sense, uh, because it's just in between Pisces and Aries. And it could be, you know, in a chart that it either activates a planet, activates something in the natal chart, it passes across some form of, of, of sensitive area in your chart. And if it does, then the months before, or the, some weeks before, and up to three, four, five, six months forward, you will notice this ongoing positive change um, around you, which can be, you know, very welcomed. Examples of uh, solar eclipses, one of the main ones really that comes to mind is, and another note to say here, is try not to arrange too many things around an eclipse. Otherwise, there is an old saying that the eclipse will eclipse your event. Um, one famous example of that, of course, was the marriage between Charles and Camilla, which actually took place or was, was going to take place on a solar, at a time of a solar eclipse. And unfortunately, of course, there was a death of a pope almost on the, on, on the day that eclipsed the wedding and there was a need for a postponement. So thank you very, very much for getting involved. This is a brief introduction um, to do with solar eclipses. And I look forward very much to speaking to you again soon.